Hello everybody. We'll see how the audio winds up when this is done. The camera is way too far away for comfort. But I wanted to put all the frame in because I'm reviewing Lady Bird. And Lady Bird has everything dead fucking center. And it's so annoying. Also, for the sake of continuity errors. Okay, let's start with the visuals. As I already mentioned, everything everything important is center of the frame. I'm not going to actually set this down, but at any point in the movie, in any given scene, the most dominant character in the movie is the one who's in the center. Right now, the drink is the most dominant thing, partially because I'm drawing attention to it, partially because it's going to dictate how well I articulate my thoughts throughout this video. This is the most dominant thing in the scene. You know this because it's in the middle. And now that I'm going to drink it, I will move to the middle because I'm now in control of the drink. Every fucking scene this happens. And if there are like ensemble staging scenes, um, 99 times out of 100, Lady Bird will be in the middle Unless she's in the frame with her mom, in which case they'll balance the frame because they have such conflicting personalities, and her mom will usually be the dominant one. Unless she cedes the center of the frame to Lady Bird, such as when she starts crying at one point, and she's like, okay, come into the center of the frame, I'll hug you, you can be the center, I'll be over here. Like, the mom winds up over here, Lady Bird's right here. But then, there's nothing over here. It's like... It's so noticeable because I know the rules. And this this movie learned the rule of threes, or the rule of thirds, basically, just to break the rule. Constantly. Fucking constantly. Um, there's even a line that's in the trailer that kind of punctuates the whole thing, where Lady Bird's friend Julie is while saying this line in the center of the frame while Lady Bird's up here or somewhere in the frame and she goes, you can't do anything unless you're the center of attention and I was like, yeah, she's right she can't do anything because she's over there in the frame you're the one in the center saying this you have all the control right now as soon as Lady Bird gets to the center again then she can do something but mm, can't do... No one who's not in the center of the frame can do anything in this movie. Including, like, they go to prom at one point, or they're supposed to be going to prom at one point, and everyone in the car who, in the shot reverse shot, have been given center frame, they all are like, I don't want to go to prom, and the popular girl is in the back seat of the car, in the middle, even though there's only two passengers in the back seat, she's sitting center seat and her boyfriend's off to her side and she goes I don't want to go to prom everybody agrees with her because she's center frame and Lady Bird never makes it to the center of the frame until she decides to sack up and say you know what I would rather go to prom because she's deciding she's not she's just done with these people so I guess the visual storytelling is good except I never want to notice something that you're doing, basically. Like, tell the story. Don't show me how you're telling- I don't know. It's weird. And I feel like an asshole for saying, Yeah, I could tell what you were doing, and therefore I hate it. Um, as far as other visuals are concerned, the whole movie looks like it was shot through an Instagram filter. Um... And there's just random montages of B-roll over speech from the A-roll that's shot exactly like the B-roll, so it kind of just looks like they put the wrong footage up. Like, I'll, uh, I'll try to remember to do a few things on this couch that make it so I'm posed wrong and I'm not speaking and I'll put that over what I'm saying right now, and you'll see what I mean. It, it like, tells you what they're doing in the scene, or, like, what they're doing 
before they got to the part where they're just talking. And it's, it sort of shows like, oh, we're having fun together, but it doesn't matter. And I don't give a shit about seeing you frolic through a field and hugging each other. It's cute, but I don't care. I don't know why I fucking, okay, I do know why I watched this movie. I should have started with this. I went to see this movie because it apparently has, it had a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes for the longest time of any movie with like the most reviews that were positive, which taught me one thing that's very important, which is that the Rotten Tomatoes tomato meter score does not mean it's a good movie. What that means is X percent of people found this movie at least good enough. Not that X amount of people thought that this movie is so perfect that it's like A plus. It's just that eh, everyone thinks it's at least a C, which I don't. Fuck you. This movie sucks. Like, I found that out and then I sort of calmed down when I realized, okay, they might think it's just a C. But then I found out that the Metacritic score is like a 94 and people are giving it perfect 10s all over the place. I'm like, no, no, this movie doesn't do anything. It's a, it's boring shit. Nothing happens. Nothing happens and the things that do happen don't matter. Which I will go into now Which with the tone. Um, from the start of the movie, it sort of presents itself as some quirky comedy where Lady Bird and her mother are sitting in a car from a road trip and they're finishing up a CD. I just realized I'm not wearing my glasses. Um, they're finishing up a CD or a tape or something. It's a series of tapes. It's an audio book of The Grapes of Wrath. They're finishing it up. They're both crying. And then Lady Bird goes to turn on the radio. And her mother's just like, can't we just sit with what we have? And they get into a stupid bickering argument because they're both strong personalities and they conflict with each other and then out of the moving car which if you look at the back window as it shows the front on shot it looked like they were going about two miles an hour but whatever movie um obviously they weren't moving anyways because that's how anyways um ladybird just jumps out of the car hard cut to she has a cast on her arm that has fuck you mom written under like upside down just like okay we've established maybe that ladybird is some dumbass cartoon character like there's a whitest kids you know sketch where a company executive is like whatever he's making do one that says macaroni and he runs the fucking uh, company into the ground and then he just <laughs> basically says fuck you to everybody and jumps out the window to try to skateboard down the building and he dies when he hits the pavement and everybody's like, I don't think he knew that he was... I don't think he was trying to kill himself. <laughs> like, Lady Bird was just trying to get out of the situation. And she's like, fuck you, mom. Blah, blah, blah. But that, that's dumb. That's overkill. And I'm glad it had the consequence of having a cast. But it was one of those casts where she could still move her fingers. So it didn't mean anything. It's fucking pointless. Then we come to, is it a romance movie? Because she has two boyfriends throughout the course of the movie. The first one is Danny, who's just hot guy in school. She joins theater purely to make out with Danny. Kind of like George Michael and maybe from Arrested Development. Um, she does the play, they get together. They instantly tell each other that they love each other. They name a star Bruce and they're like screaming the name. And then when they finally put on their play, Lady Bird's like, where the fuck is Danny? And she goes into the bathroom, Danny's kissing another guy. Oh my God. And it's a Christian school. They're, oh, we can't be gay. Oh shit. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. They just break up. She cries. They get over it. Later on in the movie, she confronts him about being gay. Nothing happens. His family doesn't know or something, and then who cares? That's never resolved. Um, the other boyfriend, Kyle, is constantly reading like economy and history books and saying shit like, I don't want to 
participate in the economy. I don't believe in money. And I'm just like, dude, shut up, faggot. Fucking throw your books away, get your shit together, contribute something of worth. God damn it. Like, I hate high school kids. <laughs> like, now that I, especially now that I've been out of high school for some time and I have some semblance of shit togetherness. Um, Alright, I've started to go into the characters, but let's go back to say what the story is. The story is just Christine, Ladybird, or maybe it was Christina, I don't know. But she calls herself Ladybird. She's just figuring out who she is. And she does this by being a cunt to everybody. Like, she gets in Danny's shit for being gay. Which, fair enough, he was lying to her and himself. Um, she abandons her best friend to go be with the popular kids. And then doesn't. And, like, she just gets away from them and goes back to her friend. Like, nothing happens. So, I've covered Danny, I've covered Kyle. Oh, back to Kyle. Uh, they get together, make out. They don't have sex. And she says, I'm not, I've never had sex. And he's like, neither have I. When they finally do have sex, A, it's for two seconds. Um, and B, three fingers, um, Kyle's like, I'm not a virgin, and she starts crying, which, fair enough, fal false pretenses, and that's when she cries to her mom in the car, but it didn't matter, the line, one of the lines that actually made me go and watch the movie was, you're gonna have a lot of unspecial sex in your life, I was like, okay, that's a neat sort of revelation, but having Kyle as a character developed, I'm like, God damn it, you said the one line in the movie that I sort of liked, and every single other line you said in this movie is garbage. Fuck. <sighs> so, speaking of crying to the mom, the mom is just as much, if not more, of a cunt than Ladybird is. Uh, she's very possessive of Ladybird to the point of trying to emotionally sabotage her from leaving town. Even though when Ladybird gets into one of the colleges that she's applied to in New York, it was purely because she was rebelling for no reason and shitting on her hometown and just wanted to get away because I want to be away from hometown. I just go across the country so I'll be so far away from here and then she immediately gets homesick after almost dying of alcohol poisoning the fucking first night we see her in New York um so the mom was right <laughs> just try to keep her around cause she's a fucking idiot um she's always playing bad cop to the depressed nice guy father who will passively let Ladybird have whatever she wants sort of because he's just a fucking doormat and so the mom has the kind of rainer man um and the mom is very dominant personality wise like with the car at the beginning that argument started because Ladybird went to turn the radio on and she was like no sit in silence fuck <laughs> like not like that silly sort of Will Ferrell shit but you know you know what I'm saying then we'll come around to Ladybird's nothing best friend, Julie, who's just the fat, unattractive, safe friend, foil to Ladybird. Just pleasant, nice student. But then at like two thirds through the movie, it's revealed, oh, she was depressed too. Some people just aren't made happy is what the line was, I believe. I'm just like, okay, you put on a nice facade the whole movie and that came out of nowhere, which I guess is how it works, but who cares? The other popular pretty girl is deemed to be an idiot by Julie, 
even though she has this, the highest grades in her class. And she has one of the best lines in the movie too, which is something along the lines of, like, I can't, I hate dishonesty. And I'm like, yeah, me too. I hate being lied to as well. Fuck liars. But she's like the three pounds of makeup sort of stereotypical popular girl in a movie where nothing happens with her either. She gets no real development either. Um, there's a few more characters. So she is... Lady Bird is the type of kid where in The Simpsons that one kid that like is like, Mom, get two copies of Bone Storm. I'm not sharing mine. Shut up, Mom. She's that kid. And outside of the relationship with her mom, she's just that quirky kind of character where if she wasn't the protagonist and the protagonist was a boy then she would be the manic pixie dream girl where she's just gonna take control of all the situations and get them into all kinds of weird shenanigans but when you frame something from the perspective of the manic pixie dream girl it's just like why why are you doing all these things you're so stupid do normal human being things. Quit being a bitch. She learns nothing over the course of the movie. Like I said, she purely wants to get out of town for the sake of spiting everybody around her. And when she finally does, she wants to go back immediately. She's like, oh, I'm wrong! I'm homesick! But I would imagine that as soon as she got back home, if she did, she would then want to go out again. And the fucking school that she applied to was, like, some art college. Which, she doesn't do anything artistic in the movie other than theater. And she doesn't even seem to enjoy that because she only started to do it for Danny, who wound up being lying gay boy. Literally. And then she stopped doing theater midway through the movie and then restarts, kind of, maybe, or still supports Danny doing it? It's unclear. It just drops off. Um, so towards the end of the movie, when she gets her acceptance or waitlist letter, sh there's sort of a montage of her getting her shit together. Like, she paints all her walls of all the bullshit that was on it. Takes down all her posters. Sort of, she gets a job, other than the coffee shop job or something. Her... She calls her brother out on getting his shit together, and he does. Um, but, like, she's gonna leave town, so she's gonna lose the job. And she's taking federal loans, which is irresponsible, especially with the financial situation of their family, which is they're struggling with money because the depressed dad lost his job out of nowhere for no reason because lame drama. Um, fucking, I think I've covered everything about Lady Bird as a character. Oh, also, just, um, as a casting thing, it was, like, going back to the It review where, um, had some questionable things to think about Beverly. Beverly was actually the correct age of her character, I believe. Maybe a couple years older, but she was believable as like a middle high school student. Lady Bird looks like she's in her mid-twenties, and she's only 23 in real life, but she's in high school. So... Maybe it's just because I'm 24, I can tell who looks roughly my age. But that was distracting. It's like... Okay. This is... Weird. You're just an older person. Mostly everybody else looked like they belonged in high school, but she didn't at all. She just looked like some college kid that was like, How do you do, fellow kids? Um... So yeah. I fucking hated this movie. But, but I'm glad that I hated it enough that I was able to talk about it for so long. Because there's the notes. 
Now I will do some continuity error things on this couch before I end the recording. But I'll see you in the next one. Still, maybe Justice League or The Shape of Water, because I saw that too. And that was awesome, because Del Toro's great. But I will see you in the next one.